Geeks on the way here. So, I think there's a few things going to change for this particular episode. Four, Four more years! Four more years! <laughs> Make it stop. Warning this week's show contains bogger accents. Please do not adjust your ears. Alright then, <laughs> now the madness is only beginning. <laughs> Let's get on with the wonderful show and the wonderful topics and things we're going to discuss this week. First up is Police State UK and the wonderful land of ASBO. No, that's not ASDA, ASBO. <laughs> Anti-social behaviour orders, which are being handed out like confetti. One handed to a young man just for saying the word fuck in public. Fuck off! <laughs> oh, 80 quid. Oh no! Oh, no, you're in the wrong country. <laughs> you're safe. <laughs> yeah, you're safe um, at the moment. <laughs> at the moment, but um, yeah, uh, actually having a, having, having a look at the um, the obvious thug that was that was photographed on the um, yeah. particular, he didn't look like someone that when I was a bouncer and a few pubs in Ireland, he certainly didn't look like someone I was going to let through the front door. No. So Would he, you have bounced him for wearing runners? Yeah. And the tracksuit and the white belt and the, the white cap. You're all, you're all a bunch of bastards that way around the energy, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, um, you know, in addition to the word that he said, it was pretty, it was, I'd be it's very hard, serious. I'd be very hard pressed to think that um, a, a, a cop would have done him just for that. You know, maybe if he was shouting it, could have been a near shot of small children. You know, mm. this is well, a. He was in a park. You know, he was in a park. It was a public, a public park. So hold on a sec, uh, um, uh, the, the, Francis. Do you object to this? Do I have this to this whole as well, thing? Yeah. Well, yeah, totally. Because did you ever grow up among scumbags? No, I, I grew up yeah. among boggers. Yeah, see, this is this is the thing. This is the yeah. typical bleeding heart liberal response that we can solve everything with love. I've said it before, and I think, uh, especially like in the US, uh, and it, it's applicable here, um, guns aren't the problem, more guns are the solution. Everyone would be much, uh, much nicer if there was a chance you were armed. See? If you, you, it's like, oh, well, uh, well, I got fucking dirty Harry, you bastard. Did I fire, what was it, did I fire five shots or six? I will say though that the the UK's um, anti-social behaviour orders are are a bit are a bit extreme. I think they're they're pretty much on awful because first of all the burden of proof is extremely low for it. You, you can get an asshole well placed on you for just hearsay. So if someone heard something that start heard someone. So I someone told me that he said fuck in public. I mean that's that's plain ridiculous. Yeah. Yet you can get this asshole well slapped on you and then someone else. A cop hears you say fuck in public, then you're going to jail for possibly up to five years just for saying a word. And people have been banned for doing stuff like playing football, oh no, feeding pigeons, oh, how antisocial is that? Swearing, okay, swearing, possibly pretty bad. Being sarcastic, oh <laughs> no, being sarcastic, humor, oh, it's so evil. Yeah, and riding I'd, love a bicycle. To know, I'd love to know the circumstances yeah. of riding a bicycle. Riding a bicycle, you're, oh, that's you're so antisocial. Though. Having grown up in an area surrounded by scumbags, playing football probably could be like using someone's windows as the goalpost. Feeding the pigeons poison, <laughs> <laughs> swearing in front of children, being sarcastic to a priest, you know, and riding a bicycle while naked. So those are all oh, no, 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 no. making this was. is the offence there, not the riding bicycle. Look, if we all, uh, if, well, if, if yes. you saw a uh, fifty-year-old fat naked guy nakedness riding a bicycle already, <laughs> so there's no need to slap an asbo. You're already playing. Obviously, there's the, maybe he so parked the bicycle the in between his butt cheeks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but why so, not use the existing criminal law system to take care of people? Right? Because the existing criminal law system, there is no fear today amongst an awful lot of these people. It's terror. Terror solves these problems. Well, really? yeah, I don't think so. Well, um, <laughs> I'm telling someone, no, you can't ride a bicycle. No, I, I don't think it's. <laughs> I, I just, I just like these are boy. In God knows how many asbos they probably handed out. Uh, it, there's, a, there's a possibility that yes, 
these like bloody speeding fines or tickets, you always get ones that are a bit weird or a bit stupid. But that's how many how many examples out of how many as was they probably handed out to people. So probably tons because like one exactly or as one that a suicidal lady who obviously had very serious like mental problems and she was banned from going anywhere near anything that she could throw herself off. Mm. Oh like, uh, <laughs> like <laughs> oh, oh no she's gonna jump off. Yeah, yeah, You're going uh, to jail, Missy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we we've um, raised the price of lithium, so what we're going to do is put a quart order on you as you can't afford that. And yeah, you can't actually, afford suicide because you go to jail for too long. It should just be noted that uh, for the the folks watching this uh, that uh, the reason why they're looking over here is that I don't appear on camera as I I'm a massive sufferer of ugly bastard syndrome. And uh, the brown paper bag wasn't available, so and that's why we're going. Yeah, this way. and we did have brown paper bags for all of you as well. <laughs> that's just in case this came off. Flight sickness bags. The, well, uh, uh, Justice Minister Michael McDowell ha is um, like it is going to go through. He's uh, talking about it, yeah. yeah. Um, but it is He's a great man. But before people start panicking that this is going to happen, like that, basically that all of your. Uh, rights are going to be trodden on. It is uh, the what uh, the minister proposes is a diet version of the ASPO. Is you're, it? You're, oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, it's completely. It's completely different to um, what they have in the UK. The, the minister has said it, it, that he has said in more words or less that the the ASPO can be um, is is the wording of it is so broad it can be applied to anything as we've just said here. So, but um, the ASPO here, it can only be um, issued, or it can only be applied for by a superintendent of the Garda Síochána to the district court judge. Then the district court judge can then issue it. But that's only after it goes through three other processes, which include um, giving a person a verbal warning. If they don't listen to the verbal warning, then they go. If, if it's a if it's a child, for instance, then it's a, a case of like that the parents become involved, and they have sort of like meetings, community meetings, like with the child and yeah, the, well, the they guard station have that, so yes. so and Then they do that, problems. and then and then it's a case of um, then they get into one of those uh, Garda programs. Yeah, they have of, of doing so. They have those. And this is just kind of another step. Okay. So the ASPO is going to be another step, basically onto that as a deterrent. But the five years in prison is certainly not going to be applied to. No, to it's more than two. It's, you know, it's it's six months. The max. Six months? Yeah, the maximum for an ASPO is six. For breaking an ASPO is six months. It should yeah, be. Been, it should be noted that if this was our show, I would have edited out the past ten minutes. <laughs> 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 Far too much detail. I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, I do research. I read things. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. So I don't think there's, Books. there's much need to pan. There, there isn't much need to panic. So you can still say fuck in public. Final, uh, final word on the Asbo, Francis. Uh, bad, bad, bad. Kieran. Great. Mark can't go far enough. Next topic. <laughs> do you want to take this one? <laughs> The Falun Gong. Yeah, the 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 um the poor Falun Gong, who basically um a type of hippies that don't that don't like um they're China. actually hippies that don't well yeah they don't like China for obvious reasons now, <laughs> but um, they they have things like they've they have terrible problems with um, um they're basically rampaging homophobes as well. And which are they? They are, yeah. They're very against, very against. I, I, was, I was about to like, geez, like set up the dominoes and then knock you all down, but as Kiran jumped into it, these people are recognised as being a cult. Uh, Falun Gong is recognised as being a cult. It was founded in 1992 as a method of exercise, and all of a sudden their leaders running around the place saying he can levitate, turn invisible, and put uh, wheels of justice into people's stomachs. Wow, that's seriously good exercise. That's seriously good exercise. <laughs> so uh, he turned around, his the writings, membership. Yeah, his most com controversial writings have never been translated from Chinese, whereupon homosexuals, uh, they will be destroyed by the gods numerous times over, and have large black build-ups uh, build inside their, their organs. Mi um, mixed race children, again, they're an alien plot. <laughs> They're sure. an alien plot. Amelia plot. Falun Gong. Gone. Yeah, Amy was gone. She was. I know oh. she was gone a while back. It was very back disappointing. Now. I had nothing else to look at except E2 ugly sons of. But um, so Falun Gong is is recognised uh, as a cult. They've gone up to all weird crap. These were the people that uh, there was uh, 
when the, the premier or, you know, uh, uh, how we put it, military dictator of China, communist yeah. raid China, let's, let's not make out that, uh, that, that it was yeah. a democratic process put him in power. When he was over visiting Bush, one of their, um, they had an incident with the a Chinese press. That was a known Falun Gong protester who got press credentials from their newspaper. They have like a newsletter that they issue. They say they have about um, two million, or if not higher, um, followers. Uh, the reality, or, or, uh, the, or I think the, the number 200 million was thrown around as well. The reality is much smaller than that. But of course, their dear leader, the master as he's called, is a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Oh, that's and, handy. That, and that's 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 normal for these type of cults. Now, I, I know that they're not they're not probably the nicest people in the world. But I think um, I think the point here killing is killing them in prison, ripping out your organs, and <laughs> burning think, the bodies. I think the point is is that without this being confirmed through a third party source, I don't believe them because they have a history of dirty tricks. They do. Well, yeah. you can you can certainly say it's questionable because it is like a per, in, coalition to investigate persecution of Falun Gong in China, which is probably sponsored by Falun Gong. Yes, <laughs> most likely. And they recorded telephone conversations where they've talked to these. Centers. They've done that. Those, those cell people. organs, essentially. But the one thing is that the China Medical Organ Transplant Association, there's like two thirds of the transplants, the organs, they don't mm. know where they came from. That's very dodgy. Yeah, of no course, it's, what, it's, it's very dodgy. And being China, you don't know what's exactly going so to go on. Yeah. They get Yahoo to buckle and throw a journalist into prison for two years, like they did uh, just this week. But with is that like the Freedom out. of Information Act? Yeah, yeah. If, if it comes out of their modes, it's that has to be just, yeah, but I think justified by a third party. I would be so. very surprised to believe that there is some truth in it. It, it might be to the scale that they might be claiming, but I, I think definitely it needs further investigation because, like, you also have China saying that it harvests and sells the organs of ex executed prisoners, mm. and like it says, yeah, we get consent, and then some people are claiming also that uh, I think it was the British Transportation Society uh, said that no, they don't get consent. So you have China saying one thing, and then other people saying no, you don't. So I mean, who's telling the truth? And it's, yep. it's hard to say. China are hardly going to say, "Oh yeah, don't get consent." Bah, they're just peasants. Yeah. But it's it it just lights up all the critical sectors of my brain when I see anything coming from these people because it's they're they're kooky and not in the the fun Adams family way. It's uh, yeah, oh, creepy and kooky. I yeah, not in the Adams it's family. It's not exactly going to get your fathers going, Hey, join fathers come to China. Get your organs removed. Yeah, get your body get, get your organs removed. Well, they actually uh, had a thing. Um, five people molliated themselves in front of the... Uh, they, they set themselves on fire. They were themselves in petrol. Set themselves on fire. Yeah, that's and, clever. Yeah, and, and clever in front of the thing. There was a mother, that taught him a lesson. Yeah, there was a mother and a 12-year-old daughter, right? Uh, uh, they were fo uh, Falun Gong uh, uh, followers. First, they were kind of like pitched as Falun Gong, saying, Oh, these martyrs! Then when people went, This is obscene and disgusting. It became staged by the Chinese government, <laughs> so you can't. I don't think you can trust either side. Yeah, it's hard to say. I think definitely there needs to be some independent investigation. It's kind of terrible. You can just go off to China and go like Larry Hagman style, like yeah. you know, <laughs> ah, drink away. Ah, I can get a Chinese liver any day now. Yeah. You know, pff, ah, the, yeah. some little kid in China is growing me a nice pair of lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty right much. now, you can go, ah, there's the Yang. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to our next story, which is the British phonographic industry wanting to shut off your internet <laughs> if they think you're infringing copyright. <laughs> so, um, this week, uh, they've actually requested two internet providers in the UK to actually shut down the broadband service to a uh, number of people who they alleged were engaged in file sharing. Now, this is, they asked for like immediate action on this and it was based pretty much on a single screenshot or at least that's what one of the ISPs re received. It just received a screenshot and an IP address, which is pretty tenuous evidence, mm -hmm. shall we say. And also no chance for the person who was alleged to have done this to defend themselves. So Tiscali, thankfully, refused to do this, saying there was, there's no due process involved here at all, although they have issued warnings to the people involved and asked them to explain themselves. So, 
Yeah, I'm not you. <laughs> trying to get basis on the uh, trying to get using a, a screenshot as your as the primary evidence. method of evidence. I mean, like you know yourself that um, any type of um, image like that can be manipulated. I mean, anyone who's read my own blog, I was in the Iraqi desert two weeks ago. No, <laughs> no, I wasn't. But <laughs> yes, you um, were. Yes, I was. God damn you! I was. But um, I mean, like trying to use that as some sort of like court basis. evidence yeah. and basis, like yeah, stop his internet. Yeah, no, well, they didn't even bother going to court. They just yeah. went straight to the ISB to save time, apparently, <laughs> and just go, yeah, shut it down. But the thing is, it's not so much that they went to the ISB and all this, but that they actually wanted to shut down someone's internet connection. So it's an actual escalation of what they'd previously been doing with notice and takedown, which was if there was a website put up with copyrighted material or allegedly infringing copyright material, they would ask the ISB to take that down. However, this is an escalation. However, that didn't really work with peer-to-peer um, -peer because the data isn't stored on a ISP server, 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 so exactly. it's stored on people's computers. computers. So, um, actually, one thing about notice and takedown is it's famous being used um, against people. Uh, the WTO used it to silence a parody site claiming copyright infringement. The Church of Scientology apparently uses it loads yes, to science and critics. Fairly litigious, them and Tom Cruise. Yes. You know, who, uh, who was actually one of our heroes. No, you can't, you can't mention his yeah. name on yeah. well, yeah. here. Tom, Tom Cruise. <laughs> ah, Tom, we got Tom Cruise on our show. Yeah, exactly. You see, Tom Cruise is one of the, the, the Holy Trinity. Mel Gibson is there, and so is Sam Jackson. Right? Those Samuel are the only, L. Jackson. Samuel, no, it, 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 I call it, him Sam. Sam it's Action Sam. Jackson, you know, when he's a black exploitation <laughs> star. So, um,. Yeah, but the, they're fairly litigious. The thing about the, the BPI is that it's the recording industry. They're not flat out, they go completely above and beyond what you would consider rational because the entire business is built on mobsters, leg breakers. That's how the, in the music, I'm not defaming anyone saying that. If you look at the history of the recording business, it's a rough and tumble, we are going to burn your premises down if my. It's person probably, doesn't get the check. Yeah, it's dirty tricks. Type thing. It's it's dirty tri tricks, and they're trying to feel that it's against customers. Dirty. And what they're effectively doing is that, uh, if anything, it's encouraged people to steal music yeah. because quality has gone down. Uh, now people do get the music they deserve. If you look at the charts, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they do. Uh, Louis he's, Walsh is uh, exactly. testament to that. He's, 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 yeah, exactly. It, it gets popular, and then they just decide to yeah. supply. Uh, a flood of the same kind of crap. It, the, but but this is like underage. everyone in their own generation believes that, oh, oh my god, music has gotten worse and worse. It hasn't. If you look back, Stock Aitken and the Waterman were doing it before that, yeah. and there was someone else doing it before them. It's how the 80s are works. flooding back! The 80s are flooding back! It's, it's like you can you see... You had a flashback, don't worry, yeah. it'll pass, it'll pass. Did you, did you have, have a perm and wear leg warmers like in Flashdance? No! <laughs> He's a maniac, maniac in the oh, dance floor! No, 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 don't, don't. Uh, so again, this is just overreach, yet again on the part of the recording industry. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. And well, the overreach is, is going particularly far with the notice and termination is kind of crazy. Actually, removing your ability to communicate over the internet. I, uh, I just, yeah. just for having it. They're infringing. They, in the US, copyright. they were suing 13 year old girls, so I don't think this is anything. This isn't like, well, a, that's right. this isn't like digging even deeper into the bottom of the barrel. It's <laughs> not there, there. Yeah, it's a step up, though, and the thing is, they're actually, it's been proposed as a United Tri Nations Treaty obligation, which means every ISP would be will required, to, required to do this. So, to follow that. Like, BPI just sends a message out by one of their software bots, because that's what they use yeah. to actually notice. So it just goes bang, gets an ISP and you're shut down, or else they're talking about rather than cutting people off, just restrict you and make it into like dial up or worse. Yeah, the the thing about that so is so <laughs> yeah. no, 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 the thing about this no, is you that didn't live. The, you yeah, exist I, yeah, I, in the, another yeah, world. It's not so living, it's called eking, surviving, you know, <laughs> it's a level of survival. But the, the, the thing about this is that they, they actually have some powerful enemies on the consumer side, which they are basically that. the teleco companies. Because no one was picking up broadband until illegal piracy really took off. It was oh, a yeah. thing used by businesses. Ooh, movies! Um, it's all data. It's all, <laughs> all oh, you've got off your bandwidth cap, we have to charge it per meg, or something like that. We don't care what the hell you're doing. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Naughty nuns folly, yeah, or whatever. And, and apparently, like, ISPs don't usually make back money from 
DSL connections for quite some time. Yeah, so it they, costs quite a lot to set them up, so it takes them quite some time to actually recoup that before they start making a profit. So if they start cutting people off, people will just. You it's, know, it's like the two tier internet that they they're, they're pitching now. What happened was in, uh, in the, during the boom, it was all going to be great. And the faith healers, the IT faith healers, as I like to call them, these are the same people that go from place to place, writing every fad, saying it's going to be the next big thing, said, yeah, yeah, we have to invest in bandwidth. They invested in a load of bandwidth, and no one came, because it all collapsed. Now they went, we paid all this money, we haven't earned a profit since 1999, you know, pay us. Here comes piracy, woohoo! <laughs> yar, yar, yar. But they're saying then that they could... They are obviously just trying to target the, the P2P networks. And yeah, it's so, essentially, it's, so, it's something that it definitely is. And like the way they're talking about that, rather than cutting people off, they'll just cripple their connection and block certain protocols. <laughs> you can obviously, peer-to-peer -peer will be in there, so they'll just go to the ISP, look, just block all peer-to-peer, -peer, yeah, and we, we'll stop sending you things. That's basically the back to the days of, yeah, break just one of his hands. <laughs> that's what, that's yeah, what they're thinking. Exactly. Just break they, one of his hands. They need the other one to work like, yeah. you know, and get the money yeah, we Yeah, they need. can't possibly pay us if they can't work, so just break one hand. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy though that like the entertainment industry will be dictating what protocols and such exactly. are used on the internet. I don't see it as crazy. They don't say, uh, it's, it's just an extension of what they were doing previously. These are the people that uh, went off and um, you know did everything they could to, oh, um, my God, the, the greatest threat to us are, are you know, tape home taping. Yeah, home, home taping. taping. Home home taping. taping. It was the like, horror of home taping. I, I remember reading a book where uh, when Sony bought Columbia, one of the first things that Columbia, uh, Yetnikoff, Columbia Records president, did was go to, uh, go, you're killing your recording business. Forget the fact that we banked hundreds of millions this, in profit over the past year, but this business that you're selling um, stereo systems with two cassette recorders. Oh, yeah. It's oh, so yeah. obvious sort of thing. Yeah. Going to be used for. Her. Like, I think the Japs did the usual, which was apologize for everything except the problem at hand. <laughs> Go away. Sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> but um, so is that right? Games that never age. Yes, the, un the unrecognized potential of procedural synthesis. No, which I love. You the may have heard a lot. About. Yeah, I love. Everyone seems to be going on about it lately. I heard about it like. Yeah, no, I, I, I love the first point that you have here. Everyone has heard of procedural synthesis. Are you out of your mind? No, actually. It's, it's like everyone, everyone who. Okay. No, hold a sec. Let's grab like, the camera I mean, and go down to the quad. Okay? I thought I was the camera and go down to the quad. We'll go down to the quad and we'll ask, what do you know about procedural synthesis? Well, uh, any art students here? <laughs> Are you, uh, 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 hopefully you're not stoned. Oh, what do you know about sorry. procedural synthesis? Like, what the is, me? is procedural <laughs> synthesis? <laughs> what is procedural synthesis? Essentially, it's used in game graphics, and it's a way of basic things like textures are represented in very simple files, and then algorithms are used to create various different. They manipulate those basic textures to create, like you know, roads and skies and walls and things like that, and it allows you to create really fantastic graphics with very small file sizes. So, like you can. Um, this an is example is, bit. Yeah. An example is like that, uh, was it Doom 3 was like one of the best looking titles apparently on the Xbox, but it actually had a file size a little bit less than actually other games. So like you'd far better graphics, but like you still managed to cram it into quite well, a small size. In fairness, the Xbox wouldn't be um, your, the platform du jour if you oh, want no. to have a look at high, oh, no, high resolution graphics. Having say, one Xbox yeah, used as a DVD player myself. It does. It's so, it sounds fantastic. It's there's, there's I because you the article that was linked there that we have linked on the wiki. the wiki. Um, it actually pointed to um, <laughs> a German. Oh, this new. We've reached an age where all this shit is new. <laughs> <laughs> to the 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 German lads game uh, Krieger. Um, yeah, Doc Krieger. It's actually linked there. And if you go in, I downloaded. Creepy. Oh yeah, creepy. and I um, and basically, but, but you click download, and then you say, "God, you're gonna be there for ages." Be and it was downloaded before I had a chance to close the window in order to find the exe because yeah. it's ninety six. It's tiny kilobytes. It's tiny. Kilobytes. It's tiny. It's tiny. Yeah, but you could be, but yeah, you say that, okay, it's tiny, but the way you describe it, you could be watching like a three-hour porno movie or something. Oh, it could, it's, yeah. it's finally done. <laughs> it's, a, it's tiny, it's really, 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 really small, it's tiny. Does it play good? And I, it, play? I, it's, but it's basically just a, a kind of a technology demo, but it was, 
it was it, the, the 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 graphics. I won't say were you know all completely out of this world. The lighting was pretty impressive. You know, it you can look up and down, but you did more. It's more than what you could like in Doom, what? but. You were able, you'd move around. I mean, okay, that the, there's no the sound effects were pretty basic because yeah, you know, well, in order to it is, but it it is it was just a very good. I, every every couple of generations of technology like this comes along. Was it was it nerves or voxels? I think. Oh, yeah, voxels yeah. were like three D pixels. Yeah, in, infograms had just developed a game around that. They looked like mocks. Yeah. They did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, this yeah, actually it was looked famously used in. Um, Command and Conquer time period. So. They, they used it in Command and Conquer and they used it in some other bloody game before that. Which didn't make it. It seemed to make a slight bit of difference. It, it, I remember it was on the cover of Edge magazine and it was like, this is the future! Until you pick up the next month's one. No, no, this is the future! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you know they do that every month. Yeah. yeah, this is the next big thing. No, this... No! And, and eventually, Carmack or Mark Green from Epic Mega Games tells you what the future is, and that's what everyone uses. But if they, made, if they made a full playable game using this technology, you could fit it on a CD again. So, right, yeah, that's, you know. You we can't believe really well, go back to CD. Now you have nine what? DVDs yeah. for a new game. Yeah. Like, you know. Final Fantasy, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> a whole case, yeah. like, there you yeah. go, is your new game. Yeah. Now on nine DVDs. There's a few problems with it, though, isn't there? So, yeah, yeah. basically, it's, it's been a base of mathematics, and the idea was that. Since uh, essentially it's based on mathematics, the algorithms can change over time. So you can just download a whole pile of new updates. So you get brand new textures or more detailed textures yeah. as they're just developed and released by the games company. And also, they're essentially the graphics are tied to the processor. So procedural synthesis or graphics generated based upon it are highly processor intensive. So if you get a better processor, so your Xbox seven million and a quarter bit. <laughs> Is released. You can just drop in your old game and. I miss IBM's. The, 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 the game will be the same, but it would just look much it better. It look much so better. Again, it's based in mathematics, which means it's overly complicated and boring. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes, yes. Yes. For the for the real nerds. Yeah, great, great, great technology demo. But uh. yeah, the the problem is though, of course, it's still all this talk about it. It concentrates on graphics over actual gameplay. So it's like, yeah, it looks better. It's still the same shit game. <laughs> it's no better, and it would be far better if you actually had some kind of way of actually downloading maybe updates to something like the AI of a game, so that they actually, if they come up with something better over yeah. time, that because eventually you know where all the enemies, enemies will be. you know where they are. But you know you what actually, do. over time, you get a brand new processor and you download a whole bunch of new algorithms, and suddenly they're not where you expected them to be. They're like climbing out of places you didn't know exactly <laughs> they could get, and yeah. you're like, what the fuck? I He's think... on the roof! He's on the roof! He's on the roof! I, I think the one of the last reactions we saw of that one would have been the marines in Half-Life. Like, GO RECON! And it's like, WHERE THE- HE'S BEHIND ME! <laughs> THAT'S NOT FAIR! <laughs> like, you die in the first fight, who's shooting me? <laughs> but, um, That's not fair. Yeah, but I think, you know, procedural senses, yeah, they're talking lots about it. Could be good, but like, the whole- no one's going to actually- it's not going to be adopted on a wide scale. No. Not every games company is going to do this. So the one interesting thing, if you've had, if either of you've heard about it, it's uh, Will Wright's latest project, Sports Sport. War. Yeah, Sport. yeah, Sport. Oh, that, yeah. looks good. It looks tasty. But that that procedural synthesis is used liberally, liberally there for like everything from the way the creatures move and the way they behave. So, I think so the whole game can be cool, done there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, it'd be pretty cool, like just to see how far they can push Will using that one technique. Will Wright, shockingly enough, the man who probably created the most popular game for women, The Sims, right? That's, because they, I, I, every every woman gamer I know loves The Sims. It's like an interactive soap opera. You yeah. talk to guys, and it's like, what the? I can't kill these people. You know? Where's the fire button? Can exactly. I launch missiles? Can I, can I build tanks? <laughs> 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 How do I switch to guns? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do I switch to guns? It's, it's like, is there a okay. Alternative fire. Okay. I created a postman. Can you go a post still? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can I make them suicidal or something? Yeah. <laughs> something entertaining. Where so, they can go spore, nuts. where um, creatures can eat other creatures and then inherit their characteristics. But, um, Sounds so, interesting though. Spore will actually go from everything from like a microscopic life form to like galaxy spanning empire. Yeah. Every, uh, well, a lot of the stages in between. All of a sudden he goes from Will, will Wright to Sid Mayer <laughs> into <laughs> the Sid game. Kind of, yeah, it is kind of yeah. Sid Mayer Sid game. You know, just on a grander scale, shall we say. Right, so. It sounds pretty cool though. The FBI. The FBI going? planning a new wiretapping push. So essentially, they're trying to bring in new legislation which will force ISPs to put in 
essentially backdoors into mm -hmm. their servers and into their routers and also to force networking gear manufacturers to also do the same thing. So essentially they want to be able to tap anything and everything that well, exists. And you, you, do you believe this is a privacy issue? There's definitely some privacy issues I think, you know. Because um, first of all, like, they want to expand the wiretapping requirements to commer they also want to do is expand the, the wiretapping requirements to commercial internet services, including instant messaging, if the FCC de deems it to be in the public interest. So I, li I like this going, yeah, public interest. Yeah, what's so the it's definition like, of public what's interest? The, what's the definition of public interest? It's nice and fuzzy, so they go, yeah, it's in the public interest, so we've just to take their word for it. Well, what I will say legally is that no one has guaranteed you privacy in the internet. So, you know, there's nothing written anywhere that says, yes, you're, you, the moment you fire something out onto the network, it's, 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 it's private, it's owned by our concepts are, every network. Privacy are based pretty much on our culture, like different, yes. different countries have different so for, ideas of privacy. So, so it, that's, it's basically a legislative issue to say that you either, they either can or can't do this. It's like the ability to open someone's mail, or you know, they have the, the, when it comes to traditional wiretapping, um, I think in the US, if after so many minutes you're not discussing something relevant, they have to hang up. They can chime back in again later on. But that was, um, if you've ever seen um, Casino, they have the two wives chatting for an amount of time, then the FBI have to hang up for a, a set amount of time, then they can go back in again and listen. So, and that's legal. So if like you have people saying, oh, let's go shopping, and you have two mob bosses going, let's whack the guy, you know, there's one, they, they can't just tap everything. So uh, in this case, I think again the internet, the wild, wild west. It's the wild, wild west, yeah. And it's it's a question of like how far do they? They seem to be trying to just push their powers a bit further into the net. So I mean, you can obviously you know you can see there's like mm. there's obviously genuine reasons why you know they want to wiretap. Absolutely, and, and there's genuine I, privacy I'm reasons. fine with that. You know, it's if you know there are proper <laughs> safeguards and protections for people that they actually do have to go to a court and get you know proper yeah. you know. Get a judge. Yeah, get a judge to actually, actually legalise this and not go off like you know the NSA and do their just go, yeah, I get square taps. Let's <laughs> <Yeah, well, laughs> not tell anyone, no one will know They're doing that with Echelon already, you know. <laughs> it's exactly. the right keywords and bing! <laughs> <laughs> My point of view is oh, that God. I think that <laughs> the, <laughs> the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, should be able, the the CSS, the should be able to be allowed complete and full access to anything and everything that you are doing. Didn't you watch every episode of E-Ring? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's where your thing. Look, Dennis Hopper isn't sitting there going, Man, we're the E ring, they need us, get me the CIA spook. You know, it, that isn't how it works. It has a bunch of geeks go, They want to. Look at that bastard order pizza again. <laughs> what they want to do is, is or to, or to actually build, build, build into the manufacturing of things like um, network cards, modems, yeah. and everything, the, the fact that they can. But doesn't that Basically mean that everyone goal. else, some hacker somewhere, figure out the back doors as well? But if, like if any hacker can, if there's a, if there's a hacker back to solve it, going to find it anyway. But well, this is just anything that makes that makes the security agencies their life easier to do to be sure that they can get everyone, and that means get everyone. Yeah, everyone. I, I use because yeah. if you have. Nothing to hide, then you have nothing to fear. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You have nothing to fear from the state. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. I, I recall oh. Stalin saying the same thing, maybe. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, and I'm sure that there's millions of people <laughs> in, 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 in parody. In all yeah. over Russia who totally agree with it. Uh, in, in, in parody, I use some aspects from Orwell's 84, 1984, and, and some of the broadcasts we do with Kiran actually believes that shit, so I find that terrifying. <laughs> yeah, frankly, it, yeah. terrifying. Everything. Isn't it true that you vote? For whoever's in power at the time, always oh, like to say that's the thing. Is there a problem with that? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. We can move on. We're we waiting for time. Oh no. Time. Time. Time, please. We have what? Bar. Eleven minutes before the tape runs out. In the Excellent. All right. Let's quickly move on to our next story. Microsoft hit with a two hundred eighty million million million. <laughs> Pound or euro? I wonder if it's euro. Euro. 
Euro. It's uh, three hundred euro and dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. When you factor out the exchange rate, it's like fifteen kopecks or something. Let's just <laughs> let's agree it's a lot of money. It's a, it's a lot no, of no, not, not for Microsoft. Microsoft. Not for Microsoft. We're doing uh, what two point eight billion a quarter just from like Windows or Office or both combined. It's um yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I can see why these things were brought in, but the world has changed. And what Microsoft is actually being punished for now is no longer relevant. Yeah. They're not big in, and I think you, you have a, a whole thing and we'll discuss how old myself and Kieran are later. But like social networking, they don't have anything, they have no rate, they have MSN spaces, which is like a, a trailer. Hotmail has gone by the by, uh, they have oh, instant messaging. You know, they really, outside of Windows and Office, what if they. Like they haven't got much. their last generation's technology. Yay, we've a monopoly and something that all the interest is going elsewhere. So I'm not sure why the hell anyone's finding them at this late stage. Well, they were. If they're finding them, the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, it's probably like a punitive measure that is like too too little, too late because yeah. like all the companies that were you know rivals to them have gone probably gone under or gone into yeah. different things. At They've this stage. gone under. So it makes no difference. Off. In some ways, yeah, it's a fair point that like it's too little, too late. You know, the companies that were fighting against them, these rivals that they were supposedly have to hand over the mm. complete and accurate technical information. You know, there probably isn't too many of them. A, but... a lot of them these days are partners as well, because after, um, and I remember watching CNN at the time when Bill Gates um, stepped down from the CEO position. He, it was a, a money line with Lou Dobbs. I was watching, I think I actually have it on VHS tape at some stage. <laughs> Gates said nothing during the entire interview. We just sat there and looked sullen. Steve Ballmer did all the talking. Ballmer then, uh, Gates usually was, I'll see you in hell when it came to dealing with competitors. Ballmer went off and began, oh, we'll settle out of court. They settled with Sun. They settled with Novell. They settled with Real Networks. They've been just going from place to place to place going, yeah, yeah, here's money. Shh. So a lot of the people who went after them in the 90s have now been paid off. And when it comes to supplying this technical information, the people, no, no, we're fine. We don't need it. Yeah, we got two billion from Microsoft. Right. <laughs> yeah, the protocols don't matter. We're friends now. I'll just license it from them. What I want to know is, are, is, is someone saying that Microsoft hadn't given them yes. what they want? Yeah, you're basically that's saying that's that. Your, yeah. European, uh, uh, European Competition Authority. Are, are, are saying, you know, when the Department of Justice, when the Bush uh, administration, who we love, Absolutely. We do, should, be L, uh, should be president for life, right? Um, because he's oh, done great yeah. things. I'm a neocon, you're a psycho, Kiran, so uh, things work that way. But when they came in, they basically just flopped over. Oh, no, 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 we won't be pursuing this case. It doesn't matter if you're under a Clinton administration, you were screwed, but. Uh, but it, it, you yeah. know, the, the, the European Union, through all the people, basically, real networks were a, a, a big thing about this. They, they wanted a Windows Media Player ripped out of Windows in Europe. And the EU went to the wrong end with it. But now they've been paid off. And all oh, we're friends now, we're going after Apple and iTunes. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, the question is, is like, who's, who's getting this complete and accurate information? And like, how are they deciding that they've received it? Because Microsoft are essentially planning to, to fight it based on the, the idea that actually you haven't actually told us what we actually are supposed to supply to someone. And it is pretty vague, you mm. must agree, that like complete and accurate technical information. It's like what? Do I do I give them this do I tell the, them the, 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 the source code the of everything down to like what computers we're running on? Look, here's our offices. <laughs> yeah. Take over. Yeah, that's because for a month. It's written by liars. Okay. Of course. <laughs> like, oh, like when it comes to computers, they, they remind me of Ralph Wiggum from The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> I learned computers. Hello, Super Nintendo charmers. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is this is yeah. The the war is over, but this legal crap remains, and yeah. I, I don't have a, a a warm spot in my heart, particularly for Microsoft. But it's like this is yeah a I think decades ago. Battle. It'll play out one way or another, and no one will really care. <laughs> And Microsoft, and shockingly, uh, if they would just made a lump sum, Microsoft could pay it and say, go away. It's, yeah, uh, probably. Take the last, but who the hell, you're not going to throw that money out in the road and think you about it. <laughs> think of all the children you could have. Yeah, think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, help sell Microsoft's offer and cigarettes. It's, uh, well, it's important to sell cigarettes. It's, it's important to sell cigarettes. You know she's still there. Yeah, I know. I'm just taking. You know what you do? Turn the you goddamn know. screensaver off. Still, do you have the technical ability to do that? Oh. Or is, is oh. Garth is Garth the smart one? 
<laughs> Even though I've seen in some of those videos, he does look like he has blue <laughs> job hair for some he's reason. Got... <laughs> he's not important as enough to know he's taking a Yeah. But yeah, Garth doesn't uh, care, and he's still getting punched in the face anyway. Of course, that's what he's there for. Okay, now you get to mock us and tell us how old we are, right? <laughs> Fri uh, Friendster about social networking. Uh, I was supposed to meet a bunch of people uh, for uh, one of these blogging meetups, and I looked in and didn't realize anyone I knew, so I fucked off to the movies, right? So I went to the movies, I was sitting there watching the movies, and this bunch of students from UCC came and sat down behind me, and proceeded to talk about b ball. Right? Be bold. Be bold, as, bold. As I recall it. And it was all about it. It basically it reminded me of uh, like talk in the hall, gossip and crap like that. And I was, what the hell? And all of a sudden it appeared in the newspapers. And I realized I've grown so old. I'm You're out of touch. I'm out of touch. You're out of touch. You've, yeah. you've, you've lost touch. I'm, I'm like a lot of the old fogies on the internet who just get indignant with each other about issues that only other old fogies care about. I recognize I'm getting older. I'm not with it. <gasps> I know. Uh, maybe I was at one stage, but then it changed, and the new it is rather scary. <laughs> so, so you can enlighten us all about social networking. Oh, social networking. Uh, it involves caring about other people, I assume. Care. <laughs> it does this. Fuck. Does it involve uh, letting other people know who currently has the latest STD? Um, yeah, you can be used to that. They haven't quite got, you know, yeah. AIDS, the, AIDS line up yet. Yeah. Crabs, yeah. gonorrhea, herpes, herpes. <laughs> the herpes. usual suspects. No. Drink, smoke, herpes? <laughs> yeah, essentially, um, well, the story is based on Friendster that has re received a patent that covers online social networks. And, you know, most of yours, except for YouTube, <laughs> are familiar uh, with social networks, which essentially is most of your friends and their connect your connections to them on the internet. So it's much like you just have a website, you put in blah, I like to do this, my favourite music is that, and then you can just connect to people. And you sound like a man who's on a social network. What social network are you? Uh, MySpace, Bebo, uh, I don't know, one or yeah, two. You get sweet zombie, Jesus. Um, it's not like I spend time okay. in it. It's like, oh, look, another social network. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, they get uh, bored. You just get an invite. invite. You probably get to just get an invite. You get an invite, you join, yeah. you fill it out, and you go, look, here's all my friends. And then you get 50 million like forwards. It, it's horrific. Bebo is terrible it, for friend spam, which is like, oh, Microsoft are send me out, you know, forward this message and you will get a million quid. Yeah, right, sure. Okay. Or the little child is lost. If you forward this to everyone in the world, the child will magically <laughs> appear <laughs> right now on your screen. Uh, or or we like, grow new legs. Is, 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 is that like in the ring or something? The child will... <laughs> 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 in seven days, the child will appear. <laughs> climb out of the telly and murder you as you sleep. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, actually, break out the moron filter. Social networks are, they're, they're okay for like a lot of people to connect to each other and just keep up with what people are doing. So essentially, it allows a lot of people to blog. So like Bebo essentially has a blogging thing now. It's not really blogging because it's not syndicated. But people can have their own little space on the, the web and they do it up their own shitty way. Oh crap, oh time. Anyway, quickly. Friends are set up patent, it pretty much covers most online um, social networks, so things like MySpace, Bebo, all those are in a little bit of trouble if they decide to pursue licenses or litigation because uh, it covers the basic steps including entering your per personal description and relationships to other users, mapping relationships and degrees of separation and connecting to others uh, through your friends. So that pretty much sounds like almost any social network you might be on or heard of. So all of them are in a bit of bother because friends will just go, we own the patent, you're in trouble. Do they only start revealing this now after the others had already set up? No, there? they applied for the patent about three or four years ago. And oh, and the bureaucracy has just managed to get it through now. If yeah. you can't make money from advertising, this is the way they make money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, because no, I, I would say, folks, go for coffee. By any chance. Uh, go for a drink. Exactly. <laughs> just, yeah, it, it, it's people have conversations. <laughs> By any chance, this is just wild theory there. Is this Friendster less popular than Bebo and MySpace? Oh, yeah. It's hmm. been pretty crap. It, it's, it used to be popular at the start when for, So they were the first one out of the gate, first mover advantage. Uh, Rupert Murdoch paid, what, 500 and odd million for MySpace and all the angsty teenagers on it. Yeah, <laughs> plus quite a number of uh, musical talent. And you, uh, most, you, you, most bands, it's yeah. like you won't I, get signed on, yeah, the bin, uh, yeah. on MySpace. I've been to MySpace, talent is, in over, is a reach. 
for most of the music on some of these people's pages. But okay, we're running out of time. Media okay. pimp. Media Quick. pimp. Media, Media pimp. pimp. Media pimp. Quickly. Uh, Kieran, you start. I'll start. Okay. Go to www.askaninja.com. This guy is dressed up as a ninja. He's got a ski mask and he's going. Oh my God! Basically, what you can uh, basically text in or uh, email in your questions for him. Um, in Go. solve your problems. Go quickly. All right, Francis. Balcony TV, it's a daily vidcast from Balcony on Dane Street, just down the road from us. Different things every day, sometimes music, sometimes them just doing stupid stuff like holding a megaphone and shouting out. But at least it changes every day, so take a look. Dave Chappelle on the internet, very funny. <laughs> if you've never seen Dave Chappelle, I urge you to watch it. It's on YouTube. And Lily Allen, who's quite a talented young lady, sounds like the streets. Uh, it's just a link to her website where you can listen to some of the songs from the album. Go. Mark, uh, the Skeptic's Guide to Universe, very good, critical thinkers, uh, discusses all woo science that's out there. Thank you, I'm <laughs> trying to be critical. You have no beard. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, uh, the, the URL will be there, great podcast. And Adult Swim, a start from Bravo, which uh, one of my favourite things about going to the US. An awful lot of good shows, watch Robot Chicken, watch The Brack Show, and maybe Space Ghost Coast to Coast. And that's me done. Alright, five, four, oh. three, to get bent. Okay guys, any final thoughts? Don't trust the news. Trust me and Fox. Francis? Mm. This week's show contained a sample from The Dread by Kevin McLeod, which is available from incompetech.com.